Hi, I'm Jay, and today I'm going to explain how a Nortec slash Condair electrode style steam humidifier works. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the cover off of this. Now this happens to be a model RH, which is a small residential light commercial unit, but all of the electrode style units work the same. Okay, let's turn this unit on and see how it works. So, we're going to turn it on. It's going to run through its test procedure. Okay, done. Now we're going to turn the humidistat up. All right, so in a second it will open the fill valve and start to fill this tank. I'm going to put an amp probe on here so that we can see what happens. Okay, it says it's 1.1 amp, that's off. It's really actually drawing, yeah, there you go, see it's zero, but it's because of the way it's hanging here, it's giving you kind of a little bit of a false reading, but that's okay. All right. Now I'm shining a flashlight on the side of this tank because it makes it a lot easier when you're working on these units to see the water level. if, if you know, especially with a nice new tank where the water is pretty clean looking in there. Uh, but now we can see the water level's about here. We're really still drawing nothing. Well, let's just see what happens here. As the water level rises, the amperage will go up. It will go up to the point where the algorithm inside this motherboard says, hey, I have enough water in me. So that's what it's really doing. There's no uh, float level sensor. There's none of that in these units. Uh, it does everything based on amperage. So when it gets to the proper amperage for 100% capacity, it will automatically turn this fill valve off. Now, generally speaking, with a brand new steam cylinder, that's going to be close to about halfway up the tank, give or take. Somewhere in this range here is where it will be with a brand new tank. As the tanks age and calcium builds up on the electrodes, the water level will slowly get a little higher because the electrodes are covered with lime or scale deposits. So um, they're basically an insulator. So uh, they're not really touching the water. They're, they're not able to short out, so to speak. So it will automatically raise the water level and then eventually that portion of the electrodes will get coated and then it will raise the water level and eventually it will get up here towards the top and at some point this little sensor here which is attached to a little rod that sticks down in the top of the tank just a bit when the water reaches up and touches that that is the point where it'll kick out an alarm and tell you it's time to replace the tank so these steam cylinders or steam tanks, they are to be replaced a minimum of once a year. If you have really bad water with lots of minerals in it or, or and or your unit runs a lot, you will have to replace your steam cylinder more often than once a year. All right, so we're at 2.6 amps and climbing. So it's still filling. Again, when this gets up to what it considers full load amps for the capacity that we have this thing set for, it will just close this valve and the amperage will stop rising. And it'll kind of float around a little bit as the water starts to boil. All right, let's see where the water level is. It is about here. It's kind of hard to see with the sticker on top here, but it is reached somewhere around here. And our amperage is at 11 points, right now it's 11.8. The stated full load amps on the entire unit is 12.7. So it is determined that it wants to be somewhere in this range here, 11.9, 11.8. 
So it's warming up and it will start to perk here in a minute. All right, our steam cylinder is now at full boil. I don't know if you can see what's going on here. The water level's about here. You can maybe see it boiling over in here, okay? We are drawing 10.6, 10.7 amps at 120 volts. And the steam is coming up here and going to the steam distributor. We pulled out our infrared camera and recorded this unit while it's operating. The blue is the coldest temperature on the screen. The white is the hottest. And as you can see, steam is being generated inside the steam cylinder and running up the steam hose over to the steam distributor. And you can see it's adding steam now. Right now, normally this steam distributor would be installed in ductwork. This would be mounted to the supply plenum just above the furnace. Um, and this steam distributor would be inserted in the ductwork so that you'd be dumping steam directly into the airstream uh, in the supply plenum. And any condensate that happens to form inside of this tube before it gets out here as steam would then come back here through this line here, go through this trap, and then it back in the fill cup. Now, we've done it this way because it's convenient for us. If it's not convenient to run this condensate back to the humidifier, you can just run this after you've run it through a trap. You can run this to a drain. But it is, like I said, running at 100% capacity right now for the voltage that we have feeding this thing. And the steam is coming out of here at atmospheric pressure. It, it does uh, only, these units only generate steam at atmospheric pressure. They do not generate high pressure steam like some other types of units. Thanks for watching. For additional help or questions, feel free to contact us.